I'm bringing down the curtain. No! Johnny, bring a carriage to the stage hall. No, I'm going on. Don't you dare, Johnny! Mr. Booth, your crew's coming up, sir. Go! Give her a spoonful of this in the morning, and another when she goes to bed. It's not good, I'm afraid. I believe it to be an infection, very deep, of a venereal nature. I have. for her to see a Dr. Alfred Miller in Boston. He's the best there is in this specialty. Surely, the leave New York is not necessary. Say yes in a moment. It's her only hope. I can do nothing. My nurse will accompany her there, of course. I'm sorry, Ruth. Good day. going to me well. I love. I'm going with you. I'm giving notice tonight. No, you belong here. The doctor is the best to be had. He's providing for me a lovely place to stay. Mary, if anything happens to you, I will die. You are my life, the air I breathe. I will never leave you, Edward. Never. Mary is taken to Boston. Meanwhile, Edwin joins his brothers Junius and John Wilkes in a highly anticipated, sold out performance of Julius Caesar. Been out a dozen times at least. Just mark it tonight. You can 
half of Johnny Wilkes is still a first-rate Brutus. Something else, isn't there? Don't tell Junius, Edwin, but Don't I'm... tell me what? <laughs> Brother Edwin, I do believe Johnny is keeping a deep secret. I'm sure. Some fresh cunt at Molly's? <laughs> Reveal her name, you viper, or I'll run you through. I can't afford Molly's. Now that is a tragedy. I'm low on funds, Ned. They've sucked me dry. What happened? I thought I knew what I was doing. It seemed so simple. I just... That oil business? I just... Damn! I'd rather the French pox struck me. Christ on a crutch. They ambushed you, you goddamn fool. It wasn't my fault, June. Is there anything left? <clears throat> I hate to ask, Ned. No. I'll help you, John. You can't afford that name. Damn, John, you're a thumbless bastard. Easy, June. It wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for that damned ape and his criminal gang. What? Hey, that tyrant who's ready to turn a horde of niggers loose on our country. You stop it! It's tyranny, God Johnny! It. I wish the whole damn government would go to hell. Do not blaspheme against my president or my country, Johnny. I will not tolerate it. I should slap some sense into that stupid head of yours. The gentleman, 20 minutes, please. We know! Go away! So help me, holy God, my soul, life, and possession are for the cell. I hope someone shoots that son of a bitch. <laughs> That's enough! <laughs> As well as I do know your outward favor. Edwin struggles with his most persistent demon, Brandy. He confides to a friend. <sighs> Where is that line? <clears throat> Tell me what the line is. <laughs> no one can imagine the call of that desire. When it engulfs me, I could sell my soul, my hope of salvation, for just the taste of it. Edmund's drinking prevents him from knowing that Mary is desperately ill. One night he collapses on stage, and through his stupor, he learns of her condition and rushes to her side. When it arrives too late, she is dead. As he stands by her bier, Holding her dead hand, a doctor tells him, his voice dripping with disdain, she called your name with her last breath. Edwin's guilt and grief is beyond measure. Meanwhile, a nightmare is brewing. John Wilkes meets with a mysterious string. Edwin struggles with his demons and a life without his beloved. Then, a thunderbolt, a killing at Ford's head. The reaction of the public against actors is immediate and harsh. Junius is imprisoned temporarily. Actors are attacked, denied service, eyed with suspicion everywhere, and denounced from the pulpit. We witness one ugly moment when an actor is hung from a lamppost. Edwin's response is to retire. But after a short time, against pleas from worried friends, he decides to perform Hamlet. Backstage, a deep concern is palpable among stagehands as well as the actors. Edwin waits in the flickering gaslight. His first entrance is met with a respectful silence. Later, 
as he waits for his cue for the soliloquy, a chill envelops him, and Mary's voice whispers, Come to me, my darling. I'm frozen. Edwin enters stage. To be or not to be, that is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune or to take arms against a sea of troubles and by opposing and them to die, to sleep no more and by sleep to say we end the heartache and the thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to, tis a consummation devoutly to be wished. To die, 